One of the most influential people of our time, Stan Lee, passed away a couple months ago, and it's about time that I did a tribute video to him. But I wanted to do something that was just a little bit different. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where we, we're still pretty sad that Stan Lee is gone. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Monday Nostalgia. Happy Monday. If you're new around here, on Mondays, I reflect on my childhood and talk about the things that made me happy. Growing up, I was one of millions of people who loved comic book characters. Spider-Man was my favorite superhero. I remember waiting for new comic book movies, excited for comic book cartoons, and even though I didn't own any comic books, I thought it was cool to know the names and powers of so many different characters. As a kid, it was pretty much all Marvel for me. I didn't get into DC Comics until high school. I didn't see most of the Batman movies until college. So my love for superheroes stayed in the Marvel camp. But while I had always had an appreciation for Stan Lee and his oversight and creation of so many iconic characters, it was also Stan Lee that introduced me to anime. Now I know what you're thinking. Zach, that makes no sense. What the hell are you talking about? Well, I didn't really get into anime or manga until high school. I didn't grow up with either of them. But when I was in middle school, I was a part of this reading club. I, I read a lot as a kid. So in school, depending on the amount of books that you read, you'd be able to get some sort of prizes like every single month. There was little toys and candy and all that kind of stuff. But my favorite thing to get was Shonen Jump magazine. I didn't know anything about Japanese manga until I got my very first copy of Shonen Jump. And even though I was completely ignorant on the concept, and it wouldn't be until high school that I finally actually started reading things like Naruto, Bleach, and Death Note, there was two distinct series that I started reading in 2008 that really got me into manga. One of them was Toriko, which I will talk about on another day, but the other one was Karakuri Doji Ultimo, or Ultimo for short. As I flipped through my first issue of Shonen Jump, I saw a lot of unfamiliar titles with chapters that were in the hundreds. So even though I could have, I mean, I could have read a handful of those bigger manga series at that time, I like starting at the beginning of stuff. So lucky for me, chapter one of both Toriko and Ultimo had released in that very first issue that I got. Toriko was pretty dope. Again, I'll talk about that another time, but it was Ultimo that really intrigued me because it was a certain name on the first page that I actually recognized. It wasn't in Japanese. Stan Lee. Here was a Japanese manga, one of my very first, and it was this bridge between American comics to the Japanese manga that got me into this new medium. And looking back on it, it's a pretty awesome series. Ultimo was both the creation of Stan Lee and Hiroyuki Takai, who was the creator of Shaman King. Stan Lee did the conceptualization and writing, while Hiroyuki did the art. It ended up being a pretty great and underrated collaboration. I say underrated because honestly, I've never heard anybody else talk about this series, which makes no sense to me. Not only does the art stand out to me, but the story is really, really dope. Ultimo is mainly about two robotic humanoid dolls that are based on ultimate good and ultimate evil. They were created by a man named Dunstan. And yes, he looks just like Stan Lee. He, he had to do cameo in manga too. Their purpose was to figure out which is more powerful, ultimate good or ultimate evil. However, they can't just fight it out on their own. They have to learn and grow through their masters. Ultimo, the ultimate good robot, finds a 12th century bandit named Yamato who ends up being his master. In the modern day, a reincarnated Yamato ends up finding Ultimo again, and this is where the majority of the first part of the story takes place. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. While we have Ultimo and Vice, the ultimate evil robot, there are also dozens of other robots that represent other forms of good and evil. There are the six perfections, making up generosity, discipline, patience, diligence, contemplation, and wisdom. But there are also the seven deadly sins, Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. Each of these robots find their own individual masters. Also, they can take place in the 100 Machine Funeral, a final battle between good and evil. Now, I don't want to give away everything that happens in this series because hopefully this will encourage you to go check out the series, but I have to say that Ultimo has a very rewarding ending. It's a series that's a bit on the shorter side with only 50 chapters sprawling 12 different volumes but its pacing is really well done, keeping you on the edge of your seat 
to see what happens next. I love the characters. There's a decent amount of complexity here, considering that we're dealing with people who have been reincarnated. There's some time travel aspects that I was surprised by, and I still love the fact that Stan Lee is an actual character throughout the series. My hope is that one day we'll get this in anime form. Like I, when I first got into anime in high school, I looked for so long for this anime series and it doesn't exist. But hopefully with people reflecting on everything that Stan Lee has done recently, hopefully we'll get an anime adaptation soon. The thing about Ultimo is that I didn't actually finish it until recently. So my nostalgia for it is more in the concept than the entire thing. And it still brings me to the fact that Stan Lee introduced me to manga and anime. If I didn't pick up that single copy of Shonen Jump, the chances of me checking out manga in high school are slim to none. And it was manga that got me into checking out anime. And it was anime that got me introduced to the Japanese language and culture, which got me to take a Japanese class in college, which got me to double major in Japanese and even go to Japan. I'd be a different person if I didn't read Ultimo back in 2008 as a seventh grader. And that's crazy to me. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Humble Bundle Monthly. We all want brand new games at a cheap price without doing any work. Well, there's never been an easier way than with Humble Bundle Monthly. On the first Friday of every month, you'll get a brand new bundle of great games to add to your Steam library for only $12. Last month, subscribers got Just Cause 3, Project Cars 2, and 7 other games. With Humble Monthly, you also get access to the Humble Trove with over 60 other DRM free games you can download straight to your computer and play anytime, as well as an extra 10% off on the rest of the Humble store as long as you're subscribed. By the way, they just introduced Nintendo games here, so 10% off Nintendo games equals a win-win for me. There's four different options to subscribe. You can either choose the traditional $12 a month, but if you decide to sign up for three months at a time, you can save an extra $1. If you sign up for six months at a time, you can save an extra $5. And if you decide to sign up for the entirety of the next year, you can get an entire month for free. If you subscribe right now, you can go ahead and unlock the February bundle with Yakuza 0, Tom Clancy's The Division, and Rapture Rejects with more on the way soon. But hurry up because this offer ends on February 1st with a new batch of games taking its place for March. Check out the details in the link below, and if you decide to sign up, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button. While it still sucks that Stan Lee is no longer with us, it is pretty amazing that he left behind so much. So let me know down in the comments one way that Stan Lee personally impacted your love for nerd culture. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow.